Hi, welcome back. In this week's conversation, we talk about website localization, the importance of website localization, errors that may occur, and the importance of culture. So stick around. This month, we focus our weekly conversations on websites and how to make your multilingual website work perfectly for you. We start with localization, which is one of the most important parts of making a multilingual website work. Localization stands for um, adapting something to a specific country or culture. So it means that you are going to localize, you're going to make that particular uh, website or that particular text specific to that particular country. So you're targeting that particular audience. If you don't do that, your message may be lost because, you know, the people they are going to read it, if they don't um, recognize all the, the, the content in that message, it may create confusion and the message may not be clear and so they're not user-friendly. You really need to know what your audience is, what country you want to um, target, and then you have to cater for that particular audience by bearing in mind that the, the language used in your website needs to be the language used by that particular audience. This does not only happen between different languages, such as, for example, English and Portuguese, but it also has to be um, uh, taken into account when you speak about the same language, but that has different variants, such as what happens with basically a, a lot of ang uh, languages, such as English and Portuguese. English, you don't really get into much trouble because the differences uh, between the, the, the variants are not that, that complicated and difficult. However, I would say that you are not going to um, publish a website, for example, in the United States, that it's um, written in British English or, for example, in Australian English. It wouldn't make sense the same way that you um, want a uh, uh, publish a website in Portugal that is written in Brazilian Portuguese and, or write or, or publish one in Brazil that is written in um, Portuguese from Portugal. And in the case of Portuguese, that can actually uh, get you in trouble because some words that are used in Brazil are not recognized in Portugal and vice versa. So that may create a lot of heartache because the message may not be clear and it may um, not be user-friendly since it, it gets a little uh, inconsistencies and confusion with, with your um, possible clients. And obviously, it means that you're not targeting for the right audience. And what are the common errors that I find with um, bad website localization? Well, there, there are many and um, sometimes they can be uh, extremely serious. I'm going to take the Portuguese language as an example because it's the one that I use and is where I found uh, most errors. When you are uh, doing a, a website localization, um, you need to, to bear in mind all these aspects that I mentioned uh, as words that can be recognized in a country that are not in another country, or um, things that may lead to a loss of message and things like that. Sometimes words can even be offensive in one country and commonly used in another. That happens between Portuguese Brazilian and Portuguese from Portugal. If you use the word uh, rapariga, which means uh, girl, in um, in Portuguese from Portugal and it's widely used um, but if you use it in Brazil it's quite offensive and it would you would be referring to a prostitute so as you can see um, a very innocuous uh, word you would think um, but 
would uh, make a world of difference if used in the wrong country. Um, I find this um, one of the, the, the most common mistakes is uh, exactly that, is words that are not recognized. And depending on the industry, you find more or less errors, of course. For example, uh, if, you, if you're dealing with more specific industries, such as the, um, the gaming industry, like the casinos online, etc., such as I, I uh, is one of the industries that I work with, you may find that some words that may be used in Brazil are not recognized in Portugal. And obviously that will bring you trouble to your website because if your players, for example, are not understanding the language written um, in that particular game, in that particular uh, website, they will find difficult to understand and they may be lead into some confusion. For example, one of these words is the word screen for uh, English, uh, the word screen, like uh, as a, uh, on a TV screen or a computer screen or mobile screen. Um, you may find that the word uh, used in Brazil, which is tela, it's not used in Portugal for that meaning. Uh, the word is used in Portugal, tela, however, it has the meaning of canvas, a white canvas that you paint on so it's a totally different meaning so if you put uh, a something in portugal uh, and you want to refer to a screen and you put teller uh, the portuguese audience will find it confusing because it uh, it wouldn't make sense on that sentence the word for screen in portuguese is ecran so it's totally different word um this obviously it's not the case of uh, of being offen offensive it's not offensive in any country it's just simply not recognized but as the case of the word uh, rapariga that i mentioned before it is very offensive in brazil and you would get in trouble if you use it so it's it's something that um, one should bear in mind is that the, the use of these words may lead to loss of message because your target audience won't understand the, the, the full message, may get frustrated and walk away, and it might be culturally offensive. And that is something that you definitely not want for your website. So what's import the importance of culture in all of this? Well, culture, it's the basis of uh, everything. Uh, a language is the way that we communicate our culture. So it's a vehicle for our culture. Um, a language is um, a tool, let's say, for that culture. And each country has uh, its own culture. So even if they speak the same language, they may have, or obviously, they have different cultures. They may have um, little links, cultural links, um, but there's always going to be differences. Even in today's world where um, we live in a multicultural and multilingual world, these differences still exist. And that's not a negative, that's actually a positive. That makes that's what makes our world so diverse and that's what makes um, our uh, languages so diverse. Having a, a variance in a language and having all these additions uh, with all these uh, influences that several um, geographic uh, areas are, uh, have uh, added to a particular language it's always going to be a positive, it's always going to be great because it has diversity, it has beauty to that particular language. A language is a part of the identity of a certain country and of a certain culture and that's something that we shall never forget. So in a website it's very important that we have um, attention that we pay attention to this culture that we pay attention to the to the language of that culture and if there's variance and what is acceptable what it's not acceptable so our message can be uh, conveyed easily uh, and accepted by our audience in an effective 
easy way and um, can have the results that we all expect. And that's all for today. I hope you liked this video. I hope you could understand a bit of uh, the importance of localization for your website. But if you have any questions, please feel free to leave your comments and uh, share so we make our conversations a little bigger and subscribe the channel and you get notifications of our weekly conversations every week. Um, thank you so very much for watching. See you next week. Bye. Thank you.